you reach, I teach. Warhammer 40k Rogue Trader Guide. Beginner's Guide. Everything that you need to know about the game so you can play on harder difficulties. Even though it's a beginner's guide, I always try to encourage people to go with slightly harder difficulties than normal. So daring hard or hopefully unfair. What I'll teach you in this guide is absolutely everything that you need to know about every single stat in the game without that overcomplication from mathematics. On top of my 300 videos on Rogue Trader so far, with walkthroughs, guides, builds for every companion, class and so on and everything that's coming up, I also decided to make this video and get new players familiar with the system of this CRPG. For those that will be here on, for the first time, I played and play tested this game for over 1000 hours and all of that was an unfair difficulty, so I'm quite familiar with the game. Now let's not waste time and let's go. Are you ready for Warhammer 40k trainer? As I am. The Emperor protects. most important thing is to realize what everything in the game does. As far as characteristics, defensive stats go and skills for skill checks. So let us start from this line that you see over here, better to say defensive stats. This number for deflection. The higher the number is, the tankier your character is. This usually counts for melees, bruisers and off tanks. You want to raise this number high. You can raise this number high with specific talents from some specific archetypes like warrior or vanguard and you can raise deflection through armor. The next defensive stat that you need to pay attention to would be armor. Everyone benefits out of armor, but tanks in the game, warriors, vanguards, they benefit the most out of armor. This is the amount that's gonna mitigate the incoming damage, okay? The higher it is, the better. During combat, for example, I can raise armor on my character to over 300% and crits are usually potatoes, zero. Do squishies need armor? Yeah, around 50% or so should be fine for the squishies. Now speaking about squishies, the next stat would be dodge. Dodge is the main defensive stat for squishies. You raise both armor and dodge with armor that you equipped as well as with specific dodge talents in the game once you level up. What is dodge? Dodge is the chance that your character that's gonna get whacked or shot will evade, completely evade the attack and enemies miss them. Dodge is extremely important on squishes like Cassia, like Hirliet and so on. The next parameter would be dodge reduction. So same how you have a dodge chance, enemies also have the same stats, they also have a dodge chance. The higher your dodge reduction is the bigger the chance that you're gonna hit the enemy, the bigger the chance that they don't evade your attacks. This stat is very good to have on shooters like Argenta or Iliad. The next stat would be Perry, very valid on tanks and up bruisers, most valid on a warrior vanguard of course. This is the chance where you get to parry attacks. Assassins can also parry attacks, okay? Even though they're dodgy characters and without armor, they can also parry attacks. What does parry mean? Parry means that you just negate the incoming damage with your weapon, okay? Works similar to high deflection, basically. So, potato damage. You don't receive any damage when you have high parry. You can raise parry chance with specific talents and with specific weapons that also give you a huge parry chance. So again, parry is important on big bulky characters. And at the end we got Resolve. Now let me explain how Resolve works. The purple line that you see over here is closely connected to Resolve. It's called Momentum. So, to put it up short, the bigger the resolve is, 
the faster you acquire momentum. Okay, and the faster you acquire momentum, the sooner you'll be able to cast your ultimate abilities, the most powerful abilities in the game that will drastically change the flow of battle. Or better to say, they're gonna win you a flow of battle. Now, what is also important to say, these two lines over here that you see, desperate measures and heroic acts. When you're stomping enemies, you accumulate momentum and then you can use ulti as a heroic act. A positive ulti no negatives, no penalties for the ulti when you cast the ulti. When you're getting stumped, two of your characters die, for example, during combat, then the line for momentum will drop below the skull, the first skull, and that's called a desperate measure. What is a desperate measure? It's the same ulti, it does the same thing, but it has penalties. Okay, it comes with specific penalties. So basically, when you stump enemies, you finish them up with Heroic Act from Resolve and Momentum, because they're all connected in one line. When you're losing battle, you can turn the sides with Desperate Measures. So basically, this means that you got two chances to win combat. Now we're gonna go to characteristics. The first one would be weapon skill. The higher the weapon skill is, the bigger the chance that you'll hit enemies with your weapon attacks. It only counts for melee weapons. Swords, hammers, axes, or better to say on your tanks and your bruisers. The main stat for tanks and bruisers. Also, the stats that benefit from weapon skills would be a critical hit chance. The higher the weapon skill is, the bigger the chance that you're gonna score a crit when you hit with a melee weapon. Also, big weapon skill produces bigger parry percentage. The next characteristic would be ballistic skill. Opposite to weapon skill, this ballistic is your chance to hit enemies with ranged weapons. It does exactly the same thing like weapon skill, only with ranged weapons. The next stat would be strength. The higher the strength, the more proficient you are into wielding heavy armor that requires huge strength or heavy weapons in a game. There's a bunch of heavy weapons in a game, for example, like heavy bolters, heavy maces, heavy axes, and so on. Usually they're two-handers. The higher the amount of strength, the more damage you deal on enemies. So if you were dealing like 10 damage, if you up strength, the next hit for the bigger amount of strength would deal 15 damage than 20. 25. So the higher the strength is, the more pain you deal. Strength will also up your athletic skill checks, which is not that important for the skill checks and so on. This is more important for combat and skill checks are more important for exploration. The next one would be toughness. The bigger your toughness is, the higher your wounds are. Wounds are health in this game. Okay, whenever you see where it says wounds, that means health. Basically, toughness is important on every single character in the game. It raises overall wounds. The next characteristic would be agility. Extremely important on agile characters. Assassins, snipers, operatives. Okay, squishy characters benefit out of agility. The higher the agility is, the bigger the chance to dodge. The next characteristic would be intelligence. Some abilities in a game, for example, like traps on Pascal, scale their damage from intelligence. All right, there are some specific abilities for nearly every class that can scale off of the intelligence. Intelligence is for the specific builds and probably the least important stat in the game. Intelligence is not that important for combat but it is important for skill checks because it drastically raises nearly all skill checks in the game so high intelligence character is usually your know-it-all character in the game that can win most of the skill checks the next characteristic would be perception the higher the perception is the bigger the awareness is and the bigger the awareness is the more easily you will spot hidden objects when you explore what is also good about perception in combat, enemies have less 
chance to dodge your attacks. The higher your perception is, the more often you'll hit. So usually when you create a ranged character, bounty hunter, soldier, it doesn't matter. Those that shoot from afar, they should have ballistic skills and perception up. Okay, like the main offensive stats characteristics. The next one would be willpower. Willpower is there for psychers. You can tell if the character is a psyker or not by just seeing this line over here and if it says psy rating with a purple circle over here that means that the character is a psyker. There can be a lot of different psychers in the game. Diviner, Sanctic, Pyromancer, Biomancer, Telepath, and so on. Also, Cassia as a navigator profits from willpower as well. Now, what does willpower do? There's a lot of Psyker abilities that scale their damage or their buff or debuff benefits from willpower. Higher the willpower is, for example, like here on Cassia 105, the more pain you deal with spells, the more potent your buffs are. Willpower is there for mage-like characters. And the most important stat in the game for mage-like characters, or better to say for psychers and navigators. The last characteristic would be fellowship. Fellowship is there for the leader, okay, for those that gonna assemble the team around them and command them. Fellowship also affects conversations like crazy skill checks in conversations, whether you're gonna persuade someone, intimidate or make a deal, or better to say in this game that's called persuasion, coercion and commerce. Coercion is intimidation, commerce is make a deal during conversation while well, persuade is simply lying to someone or making them do something okay the higher the fellowship is the bigger the chance that you're gonna win in conversations what is the most important characteristic for fellowship during combat that would be on a vanguard there's a lot of spells for the vanguard for the master tactician and for the grand strategist that scale from fellowship so the higher your fellowship is the more potent your abilities on vanguard master tactician and grand strategist are or better to say those abilities will be more useful during combat very important stat on a specific builds now as far as combat goes and damage there are two stats on a weapon First stat is damage, that you see here from 27 to 37. The amount of damage you deal after all calculations are done through talents and whatnot. And the second one would be armor penetration. Enemies, when you hover over them, you're gonna see how they have armor. Okay, and when you have armor penetration on a weapon, it ignores a specific percentage of the enemy, which means you're gonna hit them like they have no armor. Okay. While damage is direct damage to their wounds, to the red bar above their head, to their health. Okay, how much you gonna deal to them after the game calculates the percentage of armor, dodge and other defensive statistics. Same applies for ranged weapons as well. Only some ranged weapons in the game also have additional characteristics that are called dodge reduction and additional hit chance or better to say snipers for example have a much higher chance to hit than melta weapons or bolters or plasma weapons okay because those weapons have different abilities as well those weapons have area damage you see plasma overcharge area attack they got area attack damage and they do not benefit from dodge reduction and additional hit chance like snipers do. But snipers are single target, while area damage is area damage, okay? And that's why they're not as precise as snipers. Now, as far as trinkets go and, and other items, they usually provide stats. Whether it's weapon skill, strength, toughness, whether it's for skill checks and so on, you need to know exactly what you put on what character. When you play a tank, you want armor, you want strength, you want toughness, you want parry, and you want armor perception and deflection. When you play squishes, you want dodge, you want dodge reduction, you want agility, you want ballistics, you want willpower if you play a psyker, okay? On trinkets, amulets, gloves, and boots. Alright, the stat that's 
only valid on every single character is resolve again the higher the resolve is the bigger and faster you gain momentum the faster you gain momentum the faster you'll play your ultimate skill it's very simple now what is this on the left side veil degradation without complicating things and what it does when you have like one two three psychers in your team and when you cast for example psyker spells like purge soul is here for example whenever you cast something whether it's a buff or a damage dealing psyker spell this line you see how it raises over there for the red amount and it's gonna become purple till here okay and once you cast five spells or so then that will reach the skull once it reaches the skull a lot of shit can happen or better to say you can make your allies prone you can make enemies prone while things are happening chaos is happening veil is opening up you can even summon demons around you and make a trivial fight a disgusting one so you need to be careful you cannot spam your psyker spells non-stop they are spells and talents in the game that can mitigate veil degradation when you cast psyker abilities like for example cassia can do the opposite of what you do as a psyker so if psyker pulls this line to the left to summon chaos around him cassia when she plays her spells she pulls that line to the right to contain the veil because she's a navigator the opposite of a psyker okay so you need to pay attention on veil degradation non-stop when you play the game especially for the first time you don't want chaos around you i guess in other words do not spam psyker spells only when you are sure that you're gonna win the fight and pay attention on the line what is the green dot over here that would be your movement points if it says it's three then you can move three tiles if it says it's 11 you can move 11 tiles what is the yellow one that would be your action points every ability cast specific amount of action points so if you want to play bring it down for example on someone that's gonna cast two action points now they're blinking you catch that and you lose your action points and now the other one plays and so on now again greens movement green tiles yellow you can see it the amount of yellow dots required to cast the spell once you spend all of your action points you end the turn and the next ally or enemy play depends on the initiative this is the initiative board what enemy will play and what ally will play in order very simple to understand you just click on them and you see who's gonna play next and at what time what is all of this around characters icons okay this these are passive abilities and they can accumulate pretty much it depends what you cast for example if i decide to cast uh the reveal the light on cassia it's gonna appear right over here okay and now when you uh inspect cassia you will see all of those passive abilities on her okay what she benefits out of both positive and negative effects and conditions do not forget that you need to inspect every enemy before the fight starts check their movement points whether they can reach your characters or not so you're gonna know where to position and how to play what's their armor what's their dodge what's their deflection hp what are the active and passive abilities whether they can do chain lightning on you for example here like Teravantia's can you need to scatter if you see for example a chain lightning you need to scatter okay with your characters you don't want to be squashed at round one when you see an enemy for example as a sniper you need to hunt the full cover now how do covers work here we get these mini shields this would be half cover provides specific defensive benefits enemies will have a harder time of hitting your character and there is also full cover where your character should be pretty much safe out of all damage while in full cover the mechanic is same like in XCOM if you played XCOM basically as far as that part goes same like in Wasteland Wasteland 3 not all companions benefit out of cover okay there are some that benefit out of no cover thank you bulky characters they don't need cover of course during combat on this side are throwables and consumables now as far as throwables and consumables go there are a lot in the game including classic heal from medkits stims that can raise your stats attributes uh give you some specific uh buff 
for dodge, for armor, for... You can also clear injuries with them. Or classic frags that deal specific amount of damage, either it's fire damage, toxic damage, knockout enemies prone. They'll straight up frag damage and so on. There's plenty of, I can't call them consumables, throwables in the game, okay? And do not forget to equip them here so you can have them during combat. Now let's go through characteristics. The higher the athletics check is, the better the chance that you're gonna succeed in exploration when athletics check is required. Climb obstacles, push obstacles away and so on. That's what it does. The higher the awareness is, the bigger the chance that you're gonna spot hidden things around you. Hidden traps, hidden doors, hidden loot. Carouse. The higher the carouse is, the tankier your character is. Or better to say, they won't get negative effects from toxins and similar shit in the game. The higher the coercion is, the bigger the chance that you will intimidate enemies in conversation or no matter what con conversation type you deal with NPCs and so on, the higher the chance that you're gonna intimidate them. Also, there are specific items in a game, for example, armor that scales its armor percentage from coercion, which I'll explain later on. The higher the commerce is, the bigger the chance in conversations to succeed in commerce skill checks and the more favorable your tradings are. The higher the demolition is, the bigger the chance that you're gonna disarm a trap or demolish a wall with melta charges. You use melta charges to make passages during exploration with demolition. The higher the logic is the bigger the chance that you can succeed in cogitators or better to say to hack computers and so on to make them work for you to summon additional help during combat raise turrets atc the higher the lore imperium is the more proficient you are in skill checks that belong to the imperium or better to say to humanity the higher the lore warp is the more proficient you are in skill checks for lore warp and it can drastically improve your chances when you navigate your ship throughout the coronas expanse because you're gonna enter the warp every time you want to tp from system to system and lore warp is the most important skill check during those events. The higher the lore Xenos is, the bigger the chance that you're gonna succeed at skill checks at lore Xenos or disarm Xenos traps. The higher the Medica is, the more potent your healings are and the bigger the chance that you're gonna succeed at Medica skill checks during exploration or during conversations. The higher the persuasion is, this counts exclusively for conversations, you will persuade characters easily to your will. And one of the most important skill checks in a game would be tech use, because there's a lot of skill checks for the tech use, and Megash Pascal benefits a lot out of tech use, for example. Now he receives his armor percentage from tech use. Okay, so Mechanicus, Adeptus Mechanicus, tech priests, they do benefit a lot from logic logic and tech use go together well so what are the most important skill checks in the game i would say that the most important one would be awareness because you want to spot all the hidden stuff around you traps loot and so on after awareness it's tech use because there's a lot of skill checks for tech use after those two it's the rest like athletics demolition and logic and then after those five, it's everything else. I gave you the five most important skill check that you should always have on your team. The rest doesn't matter that much, but the five that I gave, so tech use, awareness, athletics, demolition, and logic are extremely important during exploration and you must have those skill checks if you wanna play the game right. As far as combat goes, I got like 1000 videos about combat where you can check the fights, how I position, why I position like I position my characters on unfair difficulty, what do I do, how I count movement points, how I count initiative, how I conserve some abilities, why I conserve some abilities, why I use some abilities, and the entire reasoning behind my fights. I would advise you to check it out so you can be more proficient in combat. 
because it's very hard to explain how combat works until you see it in action. Once you press escape, you go to the options and then you go to these options over here. One of the most important things that you should tick off would be all the way down and then move camera to currently acting character, switch it off and do yourself a favor. That's the advice, and the most important advice as far as settings go. Do not ask why, just do it. Your character can be an iconoclast, or better to say benevolentia character, dogmatic, or better to say imperialis maniac, or heretical and even bigger maniac than imperialis, but truth to be told, you don't know what's worse. During your run, there's gonna be plenty of options where you get to pick what you want to be. Okay, so this is, this highly depends on the player and your choices in conversations, whether you're gonna be iconoclast, dogmatic or heretical. Anyways, each of them have specific benefits. Once you hover over, you can check what they do. Okay, or better to say double hover over and you can check what you gain out of it. I explained what's resolve, I explained everything. The last thing that remains to explain is bonuses. When you go to the leveling and for example something says like over here one plus then all of these calculations side rating plus this plus that bonuses what are bonuses when it says strength bonus it's your strength divided by 10 so when it says you deal three damage plus strength bonus percentage and if your strength is 70 that's three plus seven okay when it says another example you deal 100 damage with willpower plus willpower bonus percentage that would be 149 divided by 10 or better to say 14 so you don't deal 149 you deal 149 plus 14 that's bonus percentage every characteristic divided by 10 now whether the game says multiply or plus it doesn't matter what matters is that you realize what's the bonus percentage when you level up for the detailed builds you can always check my full builds for every main character and all companions in a game it's on the channel how everything works with leveling etc now over here on the right side we got inventory we got the character stats we pass through all of that then we got the journal in the journal there are main quests side quests rumors those would be some benefits loot additional loot and so on in different systems and there are contracts whether you gain something and lose something now if you want to do the contract for example and you got you see what it takes like it uh weapons go down provisions go up you don't need it because you got more provisions than weapons same can be applied for this same can be applied for this okay now for example this could be beneficial where you gain mechanisms and your adamantium goes down so you can complete that contract and now you're gonna have more resources available now why you need resources you need resources because of your colonies your colonies have specific requirements on resources if you want to build something and your colonies will produce a lot of benefits okay you can get extra weapons you can get extra armor you can get the extra uh, reputation for trading with different factions in a game and so on so do not forget to do your colonies which i'll speak about a bit later now speaking about reputation reputation is where your cargo is okay you can trade everything in this game but you do not trade like in other games you trade with a profit factor profit factor and reputation you are very rich as a rogue trader because you command entire systems and planets so your wealth does not measure in gold and coin and money it measures in profit factor over here the bigger the profit factor is the easier you're gonna get items from every single faction in the game now as you can see over here i got profit factor but i cannot buy items in order to buy items there are levels that they belong to which is reputation part where you need to show tradable items and trade with them once you do now they become available 
Okay, so you can trade like this with every faction. There are reputation points when you trade. You gain reputation from the trader and then you buy for profit factor. You do not lose your profit factor when you buy. Okay, you just buy because that's how wealthy you are and that's how trading works. Now, how do you get reputation? You get it from items. For example, all of those trash items that you don't need. Trash items are usually items with numbers in the bottom right. These are the trash items. Items that did not have a number on the bottom right are unique items. So once you have, for example, Guardian uh, Long Rifles, you right click on it and you add it to cargo. And now that item is tradable over here. Okay. And once you sell it, this will rise and you can acquire additional loot from every single one. There is reputation on all of them. There is cargo, all of your gear that you're going to transfer to cargo. And that's how you acquire items in the game. It's not a classic trading like in other RPGs and CRPGs. Because here, again, you're a rogue trader. You command an entire galaxy and you're very rich. So it's innovative way for trading, but it's also very good and very simple once you get to know it better. Again, pay attention on reputation, on cargo and on profit factor. It's very important. On your main ship, on your void ship, there is the main bridge. This is how it looks like. This is your base of operations, basically, and everything that you can do in the game. Here, on this guy, Yanis Denrock, is where you can acquire mercenaries if you don't like playing with companions. And that would be, I wish to bolster my retinue with skilled fighters and then you create a custom character or you can respec your companions or your existing mercs with my retinue and I are in need of a training and here you can trade with all of the factions in the game. So Denrock is for that and this is how you trade from your ship and the best way to do all the necessary stuff that you need to do, organize your inventory, sell buy and move on. How do you move on? By clicking on the next Coronus Expanse map and now you're off to the system. Once you are in the system, you want to go up to Coronus Expanse. This is the button, map of the Coronus Expanse. Where you get to travel to Coronus Expanse? To the main, I can call it world map, to the main space map of Coronus Expanse. This would be Coronus Expanse. Okay, the map is absolutely huge and Every circle that you see over here is a different system with its own star and own planets that you can visit. Mine for resources. These are your resources. You mine resources with extractiums. Okay, these would be your mobile extractiums. Once you see a planet to dig from, you can only dig with extractiums. The faster you accumulate resources, the more powerful you are. Hence, you can make more powerful upgrades on your colonies. That's the management part of the game. Lines and how you traverse the warp. So in order to reach from system to system, you go into the warp where chaos is and you reach another system. Usually there's going to be tons of events when you traverse. There are lines, green lines, yellow lines, orange lines, and red lines when you traverse Coronus Expanse. Green lines means safe, red line means not safe at all. Yellows are kinda safe, orange, you're probably gonna get them pushed. What do I recommend? I recommend traversing exclusively on orange lines. You want to get ambushed as much as you can in warp, do all of those ambushes and collect the gear and free experience on every single warp route you take. That's what I recommend doing. As far as ship goes for the beginners, ship upgrades, how you should level up your ship and what is your primary objective. I'm gonna do that on the next video, not on this beginner's guide, because it's kind of more complicated and I need to explain this in detail. So we're gonna skip this one and you're gonna find it on the next video. As always, I thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll be seeing you in the Coronus Expanse, Rogue Traders.
ready for Warhammer 40k trailer as I am. The Emperor protects 